Today is July 13, 2013, and my name is Veronica Lamas. I am doing a short interview with Ana Gonzalez Dorta, who is an intern with the Boulder County Latino History Project in summer 2013. This interview is being recorded for the Boulder County Latino History Project and the Mary Rogers Oral History Program. This interview is being filmed by Daisy De Luna. Please tell me when and where you were born. Um, I was born in Caracas, Venezuela in 1994. Yes. <laughs> Where did your family or other relatives come to Colorado? Um, I moved with my parents and my brothers just three and a half years ago, December 2009. And we're the first ones in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> so why did they come here? Why did you leave? Um, well, the reason we left Venezuela is because the situation is getting worse and worse, and my mom was looking for a better future for us, so she decided to move to the United States, and we chose Boulder because, like, I think four years in a row before we moved here, we used to come to Breckenridge and ski, and she just really liked Colorado, so we moved to Colorado. <laughs> Can you tell me about Venezuela and the things that are going on in Venezuela? Um, well, we used to have our president that passed away at the beginning of this year, Hugo Chavez. He was just, I'll, I'll say ignorant, and he didn't really know what he was doing. He, like, he tried to help on his way, but he just made everything, like, was just going wrong, and everything was getting more dangerous. Because we have more poverty than we have. People, they're like wealthy and they have money and they go to work. So those people that don't have a lot of money decide their job is to kidnap people with money or, you know, they try to kill so they can survive because the government is not providing what they should be providing. And now we have a president that is even, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> he used to be a bus driver, yes. <laughs> can you tell me about how your life was when you lived in Venezuela? When I lived in Venezuela, in well, what? <laughs> when I lived in Venezuela, um, I mean, it was just very nice. There's, there's something about Venezuelan people; they just have a different connection than they have here, or I think any Latinos. Like, you talk to them, someone is American, and you're, I mean, they're nice and you're nice, but when you talk to a Latino, it's, it's like another level. And it, it was really nice. We we have our house, and I went to a Catholic school. And I mean, it was nice. I, I never experienced anything bad. I was, my mom always took care, took care of us so we couldn't, you know, we didn't have to go through bad experiences. And it was, it was nice. What did your parents do um, in Venezuela? My dad had his own company. It was an advertising company. It's called Nail Come From Home, and they're He's opening it here too. That's the way we're staying here. And my mom worked for the American Embassy in Venezuela. Yeah. <laughs> and what do they do now in the United States? Um, well, now my dad is trying to bring his like business, the nail con promo, here, and my mom is helping him, trying to get it going because that's the way we're getting income and the only way we can stay here. Yeah. So do you have your other family still living in Venezuela? Yes, my grandparents, cousins, they're all in Venezuela. Except my aunt just moved to London. It's for the same reason. Mm -hmm. You just trying to look for a better future for yourself. So you're leaving. Yeah. How would you like to, what would you like to see different in Venezuela? I would like the country to be safer and you could actually go back and visit because it's, it's not only super dangerous um, or like our coin is decreasing in the value so it's, it's getting more expensive it's more expensive to go back and, you know even if it's dangerous you know that's my home at the end of the day like I love living here but you know it's never going to like my home so I would like it to be safer and for things to get better that so on actually takes the control of the country 
and the person actually knows what to do to send it in the right direction. Where did you go to school when you were younger? Um, I went to Colegio Clalet, which is, I stay there for, from first grade to ninth grade, or I went one semester of 10th grade there. And it was a Catholic school in Alto Tillo in Venezuela. And then when I moved here, I went to Fairview High School in North, no, South Boulder. And they were both really nice, different, very different. But How are they different? Well, first, it, uh, I went to a Catholic school. So you never really saw this weird, but like, I never really had like Jewish friends or like they have other religions because in South America I feel everything's very Catholic so you don't really know people from all religions you feel like your religion or it's either like Catholic or Christian but they're I mean they're kind of the same at the end of the day you believe in Jesus God and and it, it was very strict you know you have to wear a uniform every day you have to do this and that you're gonna choose your classes they choose the classes for you Plus, I have to take sciences like every year, and then I move here, and you're like, oh, you only have to take chemistry once, physics once, you're like, well, this is great. <laughs> and it was really hard when I have to choose what I have to wear every day, because for me it's easier like, oh, you know, I have to wear this. Because when I get dressed, I freak out about everything that I have to wear, so I spend like more time than I should getting dressed. <laughs> but, and well, the language was very different. But well, besides that, there were both very nice schools. Can you tell me about your experiences of being in high school in the United States? Um, I feel like my experience is kind of different than a student from Mexico would have. So I, I don't know why Americans do this or people do this, but like anyone from like Latin America school, but like the Mexicans is the ones that are like discriminated about. And so I never had a problem like fitting in. I had friends that were American friends though. And I remember I was only like bullied once, but I never let that get to me because I'm like, you know, you're jealous. I don't care. <laughs> um, but it was actually by Mexican students because I feel, I don't really know why I really ignored it. But I don't know, I just never understood why they like, didn't try to fit in. But at the same time, I get it, because if everyone thinks of you away, you know, it's, it's hard to prove them wrong. It's better just to be like, you know what? Yes, I'm that way, who cares? But my experience was was good at the end of the day. I, I participated in school, I did everything, yeah. <laughs> do you think your teachers were supportive of what you wanted to do? Um, I should have one teacher. I hate him. I hate that teacher. I won't say his name. But <laughs> it's just, for me, he was very racist in a way. I had a class with him when we have to give a speech. And he will always lower my grade because I have an accent. And whatever. I just ignore it. I was like, you know what? Shame on you. <laughs> but besides that, all my teachers were very supportive of me. And and yeah, that was the only one that was like, yeah. <laughs> but you always have one of those, eventually. <laughs> and what motivated you to go to college? College, um, well, in my family has always been said, you know, you have to go to college, you need to get a degree. And really, I always wanted it to, because I want to keep studying, find out more about what I want to do. And I think college is like a very important thing to do, is because that's why you find what you want to do for your future. You might know it beforehand, but then once you go to college, you actually get to study what, what that is about and actually learn what you want to do. So you decide that's actually what you want to do. Because I mean, when you're a kid, like being a doctor or something, that's pretty awesome. But when you go to school and you actually <laughs> figure out all you have to study to actually get there, it's when you find out that's what you want to do or you don't. Where do you go to college now? I go to the University of Colorado at Denver. And what are you studying? I'm studying film and television, a BFA. Yeah. And why do you wanna? Why are you studying that? 
I always, always have a big passion about film. I started acting when I was seven, and since then I just loving film. And I always loved how they can trust me that like the story and make you feel feel what the characters feel. And I don't know. I always like the idea of giving someone that experience that you you know you go to movie theater. If you're sad, you watch a happy movie and you come out with a good mood, or it's, I don't know, I just think it's a very nice experience for people to have, and I always like to entertain people and do that, yeah. <laughs> what has been your experience of being a Latina in college? Um, it's, been, it's been really good. I feel like once you go to college, a lot of those bad things that high school had, they just kind of fade away a little bit. But I think it also depends where you go, because I feel like Denver is more open to different things that I'll say like Boulder would be. But it has been very good. Everyone is very welcoming, and people like my accent. <laughs> <laughs> what have been your experiences of being a Latina in Boulder County in general? In general, um, like for me, it has been good. Sorry, Mike. For me, it has been good. I just, I also see a lot of bad things, but on my experience, is I haven't really had anything bad. But I'm also the person if something bad happens, like, like I don't even care. So if something bad happens, I don't know. I don't remember. I just ignore it. But it's been good. I I enjoy. It. I love Boulder. So can you tell me about those things that you've seen? Um. Well, I. I've seen like different things like, well, my mom cannot get a job even though, you know, she worked in American Embassy, she has a, a master, she, she just has a lot of background, like good background, but she cannot get it because they prefer to give it to an American than to a Latina. Or my mom told me this awful story of a friend of hers. She's Latina and she's married to an American, you know, he's white, blue eyes and blonde hair. And she was with her child who is also uh, blue eyes, blonde and stuff. And she was at a fast food place and they were just hanging out and then cops would show up. And they talked to her because they thought that she kidnapped the kid when it was her kid. It seems like someone calls the cop because they saw this Latina woman with this white child and they thought that she kidnapped the kid. And I thought it was terrible. Like, what? <laughs> um, and I don't know, there's just a lot of discrimination towards that. But it's kind of sad. <laughs> Do you know of any other examples? Um, I just think. Mm, those are like the two on top of my head. Okay. Yeah. As you look in the future, what would you like to be doing 10 years from now? Ten years from now, I would like to be living in California, making movies, um, acting and editing films, and I also would like to keep promoting like against being racist toward people. Because I think that's one of the good things that if you're successful in the movie business, you're gonna be famous, and then when you have that money, I think it's important to. Not just using yourself, but like you said, to help other people. And I would like to just promote that and promote to, and I just promote to help people, either like Latinos. I also like to help people that have issues with depression. Because I think in suicide, I think those things are things that are not promoted enough. And people might, might think it's okay, but it's, it's not. None of those are okay. <laughs> Do you have any friends who have been, who have gone through that, like being oppressed or? Um, I like I see it sometimes with people saying, and yeah, I had a friend actually that he, he was like that, and and it's just hard. It's hard when someone is like that because you try to help them, but at the end of the day, there's nothing you can really do. The only person that can help them themselves at the end of the day but 
like, I don't want anyone to be like that because I think when someone tells you like, oh, you're, you have depression, you have something like that, you start to think like, oh, so it's depression's fault, it's not my fault, so there's nothing I can do about it. But there's something you can do about it. You choose how you feel and you can change that. You cannot just stay with it, you know, you can change it. <laughs> do you have any questions, Daisy? Oh, I am okay. <laughs> Are there any topics you would like to talk about? No, I think we cover a lot. Okay. So yeah. if any, um, anyone were to be listening to this, is there any advice you would like to give them? Um, always stand up for yourself and always believe in whatever you believe. Because if you do that, there's no one that can bring you down. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.